92 and a half call spread for 80 cents and let's just keep that 80 cents in mind and let me look at the spider uh, let's go to a spider and what I want what do I want for the spiders hmm, I want to get some long deltas so maybe I'll sell a put vertical and the put vertical that I might sell is 30 um, probability of expiring about the 30 range or so so I might sell the I don't know the 21 22 and take in about 30 cents for that so what I've done is taken about 80 cents for the um, M&X trade and about 30 cents for the spider trade uh, for a dollar a dollar ten total credit and that means my margin requirement well these are margins separately. All pairs trades, at least for, for retail traders, are, are margins separately. Um, the clearing firms don't give you any credit. You know, they don't see short a spider put vertical and, and short a, an M&X call vertical as being hedged. They don't see that. So it's not an iron condor to them, although it's kind of an iron condor type of trade. Okay, um, They see it as short vertical, short a Sort of, um, uh, you know, 21, uh, 22 put spread and spider, $100 margin, and the 90, 92 and a half in the MX, which is a $250 margin. But you're taking in, so the total margin is going to be $350, but you're taking in a dollar, um, a dollar ten. So your buying power reduction would be 350 minus a dollar ten is is $220. Um, where's the risk in this sort of trade? Well, if you let it go, if the pair just kind of stays where it is, chances are the markets aren't moving very much. And if the markets aren't moving very much, then you will capture the premium on the spiders. You'll make money on the spiders. You'll capture your 30 cents on the spider trade. And hopefully you'll capture your 80 cents on the MNX trade. The max profit is the combined, is the combined premium of these two trades. The maximum possible loss is if that pairs trade completely breaks down and the spiders drop and the MNX rallies. In that case, the maximum loss is that $220, where your spider put spread is worth a full dollar at expiration and your MNX call spread is worth a full 250 at expiration. That's that $3, $3.50 margin. And you've only taken in a dollar ten or so for the, or excuse me, a dollar, um, yeah, dollar ten for that for that uh, credit. So again, the max risk would be three fifty minus a dollar ten is two forty. Okay. So you're looking at that sort of risk, two hundred and forty dollars maximum risk. That's if the pair completely breaks down. More realistically, though. Both the spiders and the M and X move up, and both the spiders and the M and X might move down. If the they both rally, and let's say the M and X rallies more than the spiders, and that really the pairs trade actually increases in value, and you're wrong. Okay, if the M and X rallies more than the spiders, then you'll lose. Let's say the M and X. Call spread will have a max value of 250 at expiration, but you've taken a dollar ten in credit. Therefore, the loss on the upside is uh, is a dollar forty. Okay, it was 250 minus the dollar ten credit is dollar forty. On the downside, though, okay, let's say you're kind of right, and the M and X actually drops, drops, drops much faster than the spiders, but they're both in the money. You don't actually lose any money on that trade because let's say the spider trade is fully in the money worth a dollar at that point at expiration and the M&X trade is worthless okay, the M&X uh, short call spread is now worthless in that case you pay out a dollar at expiration but you've taken in a dollar a dollar ten for the credit so you still make ten cents so these trades have a much more defined risk reward ratio you're not going to make a fortune on these types of trades either. You know, you've got a pair, when you're dealing with pair trades and verticals, you have to look at it. You know, the maximum profit is the 
credit that you receive. And you can go through the different scenarios pretty easily. You know, what happens when the risk? Well, MX rallies past a short call and past a long call strike, and you're, you're killed on the um, MX call spread, and you also get killed on the spider trade. What's the max possible loss? As unlikely as that is, you have to consider it. Okay? Um, and executing these trades, again, it's, it's tougher because you're going to be working verticals. And we don't want these hitting bids and lifting offers. Um, fight for good fills. That's what's going to that's what's going to keep you in business. Whatever the technique, whatever the strategy you're using, fighting for a decent fill, a decent execution is critical. Um, so if you are going to work with verticals, use the same discipline in you know here the, the spider trade that Matthew has up here is 27 mid price. I offer it at 27 to see if I get a fill. If I don't, take it down at 26. No, take it down to 25. But that's probably as far as I'll go. You know, I don't want to give more than two cents edge in something like the spiders. So, all right, man, are there any questions that have come up? I know I've gone on a kind of long time here with a bunch of different different things. I think you might have answered this one. Uh, how do you calculate risk on a trade? It came in a little while ago. Did you already address that? <laughs> Well, yeah, on the, you know, I already addressed the, the, the verticals. And the verticals is actually easier to do than a stock or a future. Because the verticals, you can say, what's the max possible loss on each of the verticals that I trade? And that is, and as I said, as unclean as that is to happen, you still should consider it. You know, geez, I, I'm completely wrong, and the spiders um, uh, drop in the MNX rallies. What happens if I lose the maximum amount on my short spider put spread? What happens if I then simultaneously lose the maximum amount on my M and X call spread? You look at those. You look at those numbers. If you're trading futures or stock, then it's a bit more subjective, and you have to stop yourself out. You have to say, okay, if this pairs trade, if I if I do this Conoco Phillips Exxon Mobil trade. Uh, and I buy it for a dollar, and I will close it out, you know, um, regardless of what I think might happen. If it goes down to zero or minus one dollar, and I've lost a hundred or two hundred dollars, I will get out of that trade. You have to define that yourself. And in that case, it's like a stock trade. How much can you lose on buying a sixty-dollar stock? Well, you can lose 60, but you hope not to. Maybe you close it out when it gets down to, you know, 55. If that's the same approach you have to use when you're trading pairs trades with stocks. Okay. That's really, really important. Um, that's why I like to keep... One of the reasons I can't trade um, these pairs trades as actively as I'd like to is that I have a lot of other things I have to do with sink or swim. <laughs> you know, I basically run all the software development. I have to do a lot of writing. You know, answering emails, stuff like that. And pairs trading the way I like to do them is a fairly intense sort of thing. I'm actually going to be writing an article about pairs trading, a whole special feature on, on pairs trading in the next Think Money magazine. We just released the third issue of Think Money a couple of weeks ago. And in the next issue that's due out in October, I just finished an article on pairs trading for that because and it's going to go through a lot of what we talked about here. There are, you know, and, and I only, you know, you can talk for three days about pairs trading. You know, there are all sorts of levels to it, all sorts of things you can look at. 